Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Beer Garden Podcast. I am Joe. We're joined by Shireen, Steve, and Sarah. We're going to be previewing Shatin this weekend, the Saturday, because they, they had a quick turnaround from the Wednesday Happy Valley meet. And uh, real quick, um, they do have the grade one fields or the group one fields out for the Hong Kong Gold Cup, which is a part of the Triple Crown Series. And um, got an interesting field here, I think. Golden 60 could bounce back in this race because he is in this race, but we have a lot of familiar faces. And um, Sarah, I'm going to let you go first. Do you think Golden 60 will bounce back? Now, we do have a friend of the show here, Zabrowski, who's been a big, big, big winner for us the last couple podcasts when we have tipped him. Now we see that Zabrowski was at one point in Australia a group one horse well got second in, in 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 a group one do you think he could get a group one this time around sarah i think he can um this is this is a tough field because you have horses who either have not run this distance or haven't run this distance in quite some time um it, it's it's a good mix but i think zabrowski definitely has a shot here we'll see how uh, golden 60 comes back into this field. He hasn't run the, the 2000 meter mark since, uh, what, this, this time last year, really, um, which he got a win, but can he bounce back? I mean, it's golden 60. He's, I think defied all odds and all of our concerns at this point. I just think last race was a bit of an unlucky, lucky run as we heard from Vincent Ho. So, uh, it's going to be tough. But I definitely wouldn't discredit Golden 60, but it, you have a lot of competition in this field um, that are trying out this 2000 meter. And um, there's a lot of cases to be made for for really everybody. But I, I do think Zabrowski, he's just proven to get become stronger and stronger each time out. So he could really uh, be another horse to defy the odds here. Yeah, Zabrowski won two group threes in a row, one at Happy Valley and then one at Sha Tin. And Steve, uh, I know that Golden 60, he is one of the he is the greatest horse right now in Hong Kong. And do you think he'll bounce back here? I think there's every chance he'll bounce back, but I think having been beaten, it makes for a more intriguing race because he's he's lost his cloak of invincibility. So it makes it a bit more exciting. I think the horse that interests me more than um, Zabrowski is probably Russian Emperor, who's yet to win in um, Hong Kong, but uh, is a very good horse. And uh, he was third last time behind Waikuku and Golden 60. And Blake Shin said, you know, he, it was too short a trip for him over the 1600 metres and they'd just be picking up the pieces at the end. And that's what they did. They finished third, a very good run. And I think over the extra distance up to 2000, I think he's probably the main threat. And Shireen, with Golden 60 going up to the 2,000, uh, coming from the back, do you see the 2,000 being a problem? Uh, it will be a bit concerned because uh, Golden 60 is performing really, really well over a mile. But uh, 2,000 meters, uh, actually, he is the defending champions of the Gold Cup. And hopefully he can bounce back because just now he had a barrier trial finishing first. Uh, so hopefully he is uh, now becoming more and more fit. Because last time out, he was beaten by Waikuku, who will be participate in the 1,400 meters uh, Queen Silver Jubilee Cup. And then I think that in the Gold Cup, the end, Entries, uh, Zabowski, just, just like we mentioned, he is quite an interesting runner. He is having a great season in uh, this season. And also, I will be keen on another horse more than this in the Gold Cup because uh, Zach Porter just told the media that he will be on board more than this. So I will be looking forward to him. Uh, however, I will be supporting Golden 60 to win the Gold Cup back to back. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to see Golden 60 bounce back here. And I think the 2,000 meter trip will be uh, more of his style because he does come really late and he could catch him later um, when they get to the post. And now we have the grade one or group one Queen Silver Jubilee Cup. So this is part of the sprint series. Why Cuckoo is in this one. So he actually didn't get to he didn't go into the Gold Cup. He went to the sprint series. And Sarah's that's pretty interesting. We see a lot of horses that... Um, that try to duck other ones when, when, you know, after they beat them in America, right? Oh, we see that quite a bit over here. Um, but I know all eyes are going to be on Waikuku because of him defeating uh, Golden 60 that last time out. So he's, he's probably going to take quite, quite a bit of money there. But this is a, 
this is another tough field, really. I mean, you look at, you know, Kaying Star is another horse of, they're, they're trying with this horse. He just has not had the greatest luck. Um, Wellington's another horse that, you know, I don't think you can discredit that. Skyfield um, is definitely a horse I would, I would probably, t- you know, think about playing here. But like I said, I think all eyes are going to be on Waikuku because he's just holding that, that record breaker uh, performance that he did where he, he knocked golden 60 off of the, off of his stand. Yeah. And Steve, you know, we, in Ascot or I think Ascot recently, we had two big rivals going at it over the jumps. And is this something that the horse racing fans should see? Well, I don't think why Cuckoo really likes 2000 meters. He's only, he's only run it twice and uh, he hasn't won. So he's only been second. So I think, I think 1400 and 1600 is his, is his best trip. So there's not much point. I don't think in taking on golden 60, if he's, better at a shorter trip so i think probably like so wellington's interesting going up to 1400 that's probably a, a, maybe a, an interesting angle for richard gibson you know yeah and um shireen i know uh we have a lot of um a lot of favorites of the show in here if you had an early pick what would it be Maybe Wellington, uh, just like uh, Steve just mentioned that uh, it would be interesting that this horse will up to 1,400 meters for the first time uh, because in this season, he has uh, several uh, forgivable runs. So I will be looking forward to him over 1,400 meters. So maybe Wellington will also have some good value in this group one. So I will be looking forward to Wellington. Yeah, we're well, looking forward to a lot of the, the, you know, this season, especially last season as well. Uh, a lot of these horses have been really good. Um, I'm I'm actually looking forward to Skyfield. I've always liked Skyfield, even though I didn't tip him like one of the last times. But he's been fairly consistent in these. But you know, he's been starting to step up now after a lot of bad performances. So, yeah, uh, this is going to be a really really interesting Triple Crown and Sprint series. So now we're going to go on to our preview, which is race number six at Shotton. 1650 is the trip. It uh, for for us in California, it's going to be at 11:34 p.m. Hong Kong local time, 3.35 p.m. And the UK, 7.35 a.m. So really early for you guys. And then 6.35 over in Australia and Sydney and Melbourne. So Sarah, I'm going to let you go first. Who do we have in race number six? I'm going towards the outside with the 13 here. Run, run, good. Who's jumping out of barrier 12. He is jumping up in class. So he's getting that weight break, but he's been consistent on the all weather track. Um, and he seems to have really great form last time out. He got third behind El Valiente, which we see in this horse. And I mean, that was a tough race. You see the performance by El Valiente who took the win there by an astonishing margin of 3.8 lengths. So he's coming back. He's going to try it out again. I think he has definitely a great shot. Um, his beast, it, he's won at this distance before, but I just like to see his form on the all weather track and he really takes to it. So I'm, I'm going to take my chances here, uh, with that outside, outside barrier, which we'll see how he does with it could pose a challenge, but, um, I like him though. The, the 13 run, run good. Number 13 run, run good with Alex Lai. So we, we, we get to see Alex Lai who's been, um, around Hong Kong, but we don't ever really get to see him all that much and yeah uh run run good argentinian bred um third second really consistent horse and um steve who do we have here oh i thought this was really quite tricky i i went in the end for all joyful uh, number two drawn to matthew chadwick on board he's been a progressive horse he's won three times this season proved his effectiveness on dirt two runs back uh, over this course and distance and he could back it up last time off an eight pound higher mark, but he was um, he was a bit unlucky that day. He was there was no room at the end under Purton, and uh, Purton actually um, switches or goes to boom rise boom stitch this time. Always a bit disconcerting when um, the, the fabulous that Purton leaves you a selection, but he can't ride them all. And um, I think all joyful is interesting. I think he's still got improvement there, even though he's eight pound above his last win. And as um, Sarah says, El Valiente was good last time, but he's a bit of a funny one, I think, sometimes. Sometimes he can run well, sometimes he can get off the bridle. Wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't able to um, overcome the eight-pound rise, but um, famous last words, he'll probably go and hack up now. But um, yeah, for me, all joyful with Matthew Chadwick. 
Old Joyful drawn number two, but is carrying one of the top weights in this car or in this contest. Then maybe we do have a pattern here because he got eighth, but he won. And then he had eighth, a seventh, and then he won two times before that. So we'll see how he goes around. And Shireen, who do we have for race number six? Yeah, here and I like another horse from the widest draw that will be number one, Sky Supreme. Because his form is uh, in this season, I think it is okay in class three, but uh, he failed to have a breakthrough in class three. So this time down in class four, I think that he should be competitive here. However, gate 14 would be a bit concerned because it will be a bit difficult for this uh, possibly leader. And hopefully in this field, because uh, this field it is for the horses from the rating from 35 to 60. So it would be a quite a special class four race containing some class five uh, horses here. And I think that number one Sky Supreme down in class should be uh, classy here. So this time with Jerry Chow on board, I think that he can he will try his best to lead and I hope he can overcome the wide draw. So I will go for number one Sky Supreme. Sky Supreme, John Whitest of all with Jerry Chow, barrier number 14. So he does take some weight off of his back, so he's not going to be really be the top weight. That's going to be Steve's horse, all joyful. But yeah, uh, uh, he is the class of the race, so if he does get to go back down and, and win, wouldn't be a surprise uh, for all of us here. Uh, I went with the number 10 blotting paper, um, number 8, or he's drawn 8 with Alex Hamlin. Um He's starting to get a little bit into form now for the beginning of the season. So he has a race. It's December 29th, but he is going to be, I'm pretty sure he's going to be the speed of the race. I think he's going to have to overcome the barrier eight, but he held on in his last race against all joyful who was, uh, who's who they were facing each other again. And that's the one that Steve picked. And all joyful was just too good that day over the top of him and then uh, ran on late. But I think the fitness for for blotting paper and he is going to take a little bit more weight off. I think if he pings out of the gate, he's going to keep galloping. So to review our race, race number six, uh, Sarah has 13 run, run good. Steve has two all joyful. Shireen has one sky supreme and I have number 10 blotting paper. So we're going to go on to another all-weather race, and that is going to be race number eight. So this is an hour after race number six. And Steve, or I'm sorry, Sarah, who do we have here? I'm going with the two here, Ultra Express, jumping out of barrier at 13. Uh, this is also my value pick as well. This horse just seemed, he always just quite of a bit of a lucky run he has a lot of challenges but he always seems to prevail um you know last time out in december he that was his one race or uh, you could kind of uh look beyond that he just had one unlucky day um but he's coming in off of a barrier trial so he's coming in in fresh um and in marrera is not aboard this time which could prove a challenge but um i like that the jockey has ridden him in the barrier trial got to know this horse he is very particular it seems like but he has really consistent form and great form over this all-weather track i think you're going to get a lot a great value on him so i'm going to take my shot here with the two ultra express ultra express so race number eight is a class three race over the 1650 and also joe marrera has been on him and has um he had a big winning streak for a while. I two wins in a row last season, going into the next season, getting a second and then a first. But I, I you know, he, he's he's won as a favorite and he's been beaten as a favorite, but he is drawn wide as the ball. So we'll see how Ultra Express goes, but you will get some good value because he's had he has one on the at the trip before. And Steve, who do we have here? Went for number 11, Royal Pride, drawn in five under Alfie Chan. I think we'll have a good price about Royal Pride. He's um, yet to win in Hong Kong. He's won twice in Australia. It's one of these picks that um, could be a disaster, but I'll get great kudos if it runs um, and makes the top three. A um, few runs back now, six or seven runs back. He was fourth excellent daddy over 1,200 metres, so he's gradually stepped up in trip. And I thought there was a glimmer of promise um, three runs back over this distance, uh, this course and distance. He was 10th to infinite power, kind of like the way he stayed on. And I tipped him next time on HKIR night, the international day. 
and uh, he was fourth Tempest Express, about 50 to one. That was a great run. And forget last time, he was up to 2,200 metres and he was stuck out wide off the channel all the way and he faded back to, I think he was last at the end. So we can just write that off as just a bad day. But uh, he'll have nice odds. I think he's an interesting horse. I also like King's Capital. He's finished third and second the last twice and he could well um, go one better again. But at the price, I just think Royal Pride is a really interesting horse if he puts his best foot forward. Yeah, if you, Steve, if you do land this right now, the Australian tote, we have one hundred and one dollars. So we're looking at a hundred to one if he mm. happens to win the race, and you probably get some good value in the places if he does run second or third. And Shireen, who do we have here for race number eight? Yeah, so in race eight, I will go for number four, Bear Slam. Uh, he joined David Hall stable after David Ferris was uh, leaving Hong Kong. And last time out, uh, Bear Slam racing over 1,200 meters on the all-weather track. Uh, before that, we never see him perform well over such a short distance. However, he is a uh, because he was a winner over a mile and 1,800 meters. However, last time out, I think that uh, he did really surprise us. And at that time, he stayed at the back after after jumping from gate 11 and then he showed a great turn of foot to run to run third behind majestic stars and everyone's victory who are quite in form recently so this time bear slam will up to a mile again which is a more suitable distance for him and i will be looking forward to his performance uh this time and this time daniel moore takes the ride and jumping from gate six i think that he can stay in a great position so i think he is having quite a good chance here so for me number four Bear Slam. Bear Slam does have a win um, at the all weather track with Blake Shin uh, last year, uh, February 6th. So almost the, exactly a year ago, he's had his win. So maybe he's turning his form around now with the third place finish at $101. So he was 100 to 1 as well, but turned his form around in the sprint race on the all weather track. And I went for an old old man that that seems to to show up sometimes and that is number six amazing chocolate now he had a big winning streak back and he was probably like everybody thought that he was going to turn his form around and be really really good and then all of a sudden i don't know if he just lost the zest for racing but his performances have been bad but it looks like he's kind of bouncing back now with the last uh start finish at um fifth place at Shotin on the all-weather track, but on a sprint race, and Zach Purton was actually on him. So he, he gets the booking of Cash Wong, which is one of my favorite names of a jockey, Cash Wong, and he's going to be in this race. I think he's going to be prepared, uh, does get the longer trip, and I know he, he's, he's one of the ones that come from the back and, and swoop him in later, but he does have some sort of back class. I will just say that because he has one at class three before. So um, uh, that's, who, that's who I'm going to pick. So to review our picks, number or race number eight is two Ultra Express. And that is for Sarah. That's her value bet. Steve is race number eight. Oh, sorry. Steve is 11 Royal Pride. Race number eight, four is a bear slam for Shireen. And then um, rate or number six, Amazing Chocolate is my value bet as well in this race. So now we're going to go on to our favorite part of the program, which is our best bets. Steve and Shireen had some big best bets come in last week or, la or a couple days ago, I should say, at Happy Valley with Zach Purton winning. So Sarah... We have to have a best bet here. We weren't on the board. So who is your best bet uh, for shot 10? Wow. That was a lot of pressure, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, hopefully we can get on the board here. I am going to race 10 here uh, with the nine novice two with ruin aboard. Um, who's had such wonderful luck on this horse. He is jumping up in class um, and distance. Um, and after that last performance at, at the end of January, where he was running in that class three at the 1400 meter mark and took off. And when he watched his gallop out, uh, that was an indicator to me that I don't think this horse is going to be challenged by adding any distance. Um, he has been just dominating the 1400 um, at Shaw 10. So he comes in for the 1600 or eight furlongs. So I'm excited. I think he's going to put on one heck, heck of a race here. He is jumping out of barrier 12, which is a little bit wider than I would like for him. Um, but this horse just seems to overcome anything that is thrown at him and, and all, all the races he performs in. And so Ruin has quite a, a great 
um, record on this horse. And I see him definitely riding him to another victory here. So that is race 10, the nine novice two. Now novice two is interesting because his last three runs, he was carrying 53 and he won by 0.2 lengths. Then he was carrying 55, 1.5 lengths. And then when he's carrying 58, he won by a length and a half. So every time he gets up in the in the weights, he just wins in bigger margins. And Steve, who do we have as your best bet for this weekend? Well, I'm I'm staying with on point because I tipped him up as my best bet last time and he won, which was very nice of him. So I'm sticking with him on point. It's in race four and he's the top weight, number one, drawn four under Zach Purton. And he got off the mark last time for Joe Moreira over course and distance. He didn't win by far. But it was a fairly comfortable, cosy sort of win. He won by three quarters of a length, which accounts for a seven-point rise. So he has more to do, but I think he's capable of doing it. And, of course, Zach taking over from Marrera. It's just like for like two fantastic jockeys. I think the likes of Amigos Giggle could be an interesting horse to chase him home. But hopefully On Point can win again on just his third run. Yeah, on Point with Zach Purton. Sorry, fourth um... run. Oh, fourth run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Zach Purton gets the ride uh, for on point and won really well last time out. And he's going to stay on the same trip at 1400 meters. So we're looking for a double and looking for a big day for Zach Purton because Shireen, who is your best bet? Yeah, my best bet will be also written by Zach Purton. That will be in race five, number seven, Ka Ying Lucky. He will be a debutant of a three-year debutant trained by David Hall and would, will be written by Zach Purton on Saturday. And this horse is tied by Soul Star. We see that there are many, many progenies of Soul Star is having, are having quite good results in Hong Kong, especially over the sprint races. And they are usually such kind of early mature type. So just like Ka uh, Lucky before this debut, he has a good preparation. He had eight barrier trial, and we see that he is progressing quite well. On the recent barrier trial at Happy Valley on 22nd of January, uh, he has good speed and he can he could keep till the end, showing that he is now ready for racing. So this time, gate 11 would be good for him because uh, the thousand meters will be on the straight course, so outside gate is quite good, and also. Of course, Zach Proton on board this time will be more, for me, will be more confident. So hopefully, Zach is going to have another great day on Saturday. So my best bet, race five, number seven, Ka Ying Lucky. Yeah, and we saw Lucky Suizanes win as a first-time starter at Happy Valley with also Zach Purton, and he got a pretty decent price for Zach Purton with the odds. He had about a $4.80 shot that ended up winning, so we're looking for him to, to do the same at Sha Tin again. And for my best bet, I went to race number nine, and that is going to be Gold Marquis. So Gold Marquis actually ran in New Zealand and uh, ran in, in, in some listed races, and or actually ran in a benchmark and then won his maiden. And then the, b- the race before that, he were, where he uh, broke his maiden, he was actually up against uh, a derby contender, uh, the Irishman, and he got fourth to him. But he's been really, really consistent after he arrived in Hong Kong. So he's had a couple of seconds, a third, and he's going up to a trip in 1400. And that's what uh, he won in New Zealand. He won in the 1400 meters. And Daniel Moore is uh, trying to get a win. I know he's hungry for a win after getting his first one. We didn't see him get a win, I, I don't think, at Happy Valley uh, a couple of days ago. So I'm thinking that with that with that performances, um, with the 1400 because he went from a thousand got third 1200 he got fourth i think the longer distance is going to be a, a lot better for him so to review our best bets sarah for race number 10 nine novice two steve race four one on point race five for shireen number seven kaying lucky and race number nine, eight gold marquees for me. And now we're going to go on to our value bets here. And Sarah, uh, Sarah, who do we have for your value bet? Mine is Ultra Express, the two in race eight. Um, I think you're going to get quite a bit of value on this horse because I think his last time out was really going to scare uh, the punters. But he's coming in against familiar company. So this horse knows what he's up to. We do get Ru- uh, Rune aboard. So hopefully... Since I have him as my best bet and my value bet, I will get some luck. But I, what really struck out to me um, was similar to uh, Novus 2, where that horse would get into the most pre- 
um, particular predicaments in, in the race, but, but Ruin would just know how to maneuver that horse to set him up for the right trip. And I feel like he's great for jumping on this horse. And cause this horse is another one that just seems to come into a lot of challenges out on the field. So Ruin's going to know how to handle that. Um, and I think, like I said, I think you're going to get great value because I think his past performance is just going to scare the punters. So we'll, we will see, but that is two ultra express in race eight. Yeah. Ultra express 13 career starts, four wins, three seconds and two thirds. So you are going to get some good value as far as that. He has a good, pretty good winning percentage and he's won a lot at shot in. So Steve, who is your value bet for uh shot in this weekend? Well, I was, I was tempted at one stage to go for Royal Pride in race eight because it's going to be a, a massive price, as you said. But I thought there's all, I thought if I pick another horse, there's always a chance of blowing my own trumpet um, and more chance of that happening. So I went for race number two and it's Marvel Dragon um, number four drawn six. I was a bit like last week when I, um, I picked Regency Star as my value bet. I was a bit worried about the price, but actually that one at seven to one. So hopefully Marvel Dragon will be nice odds as well. And he's on a bit of a losing run. But uh, consequently, he's well handicapped now. He's on a fair mark. And crucially, he's running very well. He was a good fifth to Eason on his penultimate run. And then last time, he was a little unlucky in fourth behind Pan's Prince, which is a nice horse. Karis Teton keeps the faith. And the trainer, Benu Young, had a welcome winner on Wednesday with my best bet, Dragon Pride. So hopefully, um, we can get a win with Marvel Dragon. Yeah, Marvel Dragon last time out um, was against Pins Prince that ended up winning that race, but he was only off by 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 a length. So if he could cover up the length and and go a little bit further and catch him, then yeah, we'll we'll definitely get some good value. I just want to see what his price is in the Australian market real quick, just to take a look. Uh, six dollars and fifty cents. So we're gonna see if it goes up or it goes down. And and Shireen, who is your best bet? I mean, sorry, value bet? (laughs) Yes, very bad. I will have my value bet uh, in race seven. I quite like number 10, double sex pop. Uh, This horse has quite good form in Australia before coming to Hong Kong, and he will have his second up on Saturday in Hong Kong. Last time out, he did not have a clear one in the home straight, but he was just beaten by one and a half length. I think that it was quite an impressive debut for this young horse. So one more barrier trial before this start. I think that this horse is improving, showing that he is stronger and now ready to win. Kara Seaton will be on board and this time he will be just carrying 117 pounds, which will be quite good for this four-year-old. And I believe he will, he is able to show some improvement on saturday so and i also think that he will have quite a good value that will be race seven number 10 double six pop will be my value bet yeah value bet for sure is number 10 value six pop 21 dollars in the australian market and looks to improve after uh winning at canterbury and then also getting a third at rose hill and a benchmark 72 and we're for my value bet i'm going to go back to race number eight and that is going to be Oh, there. So number six, Amazing Chocolate with Cash, uh, Cash Wong. Uh, yeah, like I said before, in the when we were previewing this race, uh, he he has some he has some sort of back class, and I, I could see him sort of improving now uh, after having all those wins in a row back uh, about a, a season or two ago. So I think he's going to be able to bounce back um, in this class three race. So to sum up our value bets. Sarah, race number eight, two Ultra Express. Steve, race number eight. Oh, no, sorry. Steve, race number two, four Marvelous Dragon. Shireen, race number seven, ten double six pop. And then for me, race number eight, six Amazing Chocolate. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the preview. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Shireen's YouTube channel. If you have any best bets, put it in the comments down below. And good luck this weekend at Shatin.